just tell me the time you first heard about the Grimsley 99, how this project came about for you. Well, in a cold day in March of 2018, a group of Grimsley guys invited me to come look at the field house. And then they showed me the memorial room, which I had never heard of. And then I saw that plaque, it said the Grimsley Roll, the Greensboro Senior High Roll of Honor of the 97 boys and two girls who were killed in World War II who were former Greensboro Senior High students. I recognized a few of the names, most of them I did not, but it just intrigued me that, that those 99 uh, brave souls went off and many of, them, many of them, some of them quit school, they didn't even graduate, but, and, but some of them went on to college and everything, but they, many of them volunteered, a few were drafted, but they served our country and their lives were snuffed out in the prime, before they even reached the prime. Because not a single one of the people on that list made it home to tell their story. Not a one. And I felt kind of guilty. I've written a lot of stories. I've written a dozen or more stories about Greensboro senior high guys and gals who served and came back and had successful careers and everything. But these 99s, nobody told their stories. A few of them, like the Pretty Brothers, were quite well known and, and given pub, publicized, but most of them were not. So they took their stories to the grave yes, until right. you came along and felt compelled to research about what they did, the sacrifices they made. That's exactly right. And what were some of the stories that stuck out to you the most? Well, of course, I knew the Pretty Brothers, and of course it's ironic that George Pretty was the leading P-51H during World War II. Mm -hmm. And he was shot down by our, our own, by friendly fire, if there is a such a word. Uh, and then there's prisoners, of, one was a prisoner of war of the J Japanese, and he was sunk on a hail ship carrying him from the Philippines to, Jap J to Japan, sunk by our own Navy. Our own submarine killed 800 of our prisoners of war, of course we didn't know it. But just so many ironic stories. The Marine Corps League detachment that I'm in was named after Kirkman. He was one of the first Grimsley people to fall during World War II. He was killed on Guadalcanal. So my brother was on Guadalcanal, so I had a close connection with that. So uh, every story was just unique. The, 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 the Army nurse, uh, Jeanette uh, Henley, who was killed, uh, she was in Burma and she volunteered to go pick up some wounded GIs on the Burma Road. They had to land, it wasn't even an airport where they landed. But 15 Army nurses volunteered to go and they picked up 25 wounded soldiers and brought them back. And when they landed at the hospital, they crashed and everybody on the ship were killed. All the crew and all the nurses and all the wounded. So just each, and there were so many cases of bravery. Seven of these yeah. won the Silver Stars. And of course, Pretty run the Distinguished Service Cross. That's the second highest award our country gives. So. I imagine that this book was a lot harder to write than your first one because you did not have those first-hand mm, accounts. That's exactly right. I, I felt uh, unsure of myself the whole project. But every now and then I'd run across somebody with first-hand knowledge, and that was encouraging. Uh, but there are not few, not very many like Dr. Marsh left who, who can reinforce what you, you read in newspaper archives or the library or things like that. So you did the same digging though. You went through the military archives, you talked to friends and relatives and <clears> tried <throat> to get a picture of these 99 and Yeah, Met, uh, the librarian at that time was Nellie Rowe Jones. Mm -hmm. And her dad had died in World War I, so she had the heart, I think, for veterans. And she clipped every death notice from all the newspapers, the High Point paper and the Greensboro papers, and she put them in a big book, five big books as a matter of fact, and they're in the Greensboro library at this moment. And I went to the library every Monday for like two months and worked with, with those archives. And I recommend, that's a great source uh, of information. Wow, that's amazing. After your last book, you said you wouldn't stop researching World War II veterans because there were so many stories left to tell. Do you still feel that, like you have this mission to try to preserve history as much as you can? I guess you could say that I do. I feel sometimes if I don't do it, who will? I'm sure there are 
I, I don't want to overestimate myself, but that's, that is a mission and I enjoy doing it. Nobody left. Yeah, nobody left. It must be emotional seeing, you know, your research now immortalized in this room. It's kind of come full circle and you've added to the depth of this room and the understanding. So what is it like seeing kind of the fruits of your labor? Well, it's really encouraging to see the school interested in rejuvenating this memorial room. It was quite a piece in 1950, you know, when it was dedicated. Uh, but over the years, it's kind of atrophied and hasn't sure. received a lot of publicity. And, but Ethan Albright has kind of been the mover and the shaker behind it. And the historian for, uh, for Grimsley is Peter Bird. He lives out of state, but he has a heart for history. And this is part of the history. During World War II, you know, Grim, uh, Greensboro Senior was, that was a big show. There wasn't any other schools in Greensboro, right. except Curry School, which was a small school at UNCG. But, uh, this was where the action was during World War I mean, over the years, this right. school has won more athletic championships than any other high school in North Carolina right. ever will. So it's an amazing history here at, on this, these grounds where we are. I, I say that, it was an apology to my kids, all of whom graduated from Page. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So tell me how you met Dr. Marks before we get into his story. Well, I met Dr. Marks uh, early on, and I wrote about him because, and I called him a World War II guy because he was in medical school during World War II, and then he served in Korea, and. Um, then he had intimate knowledge of, uh, of World War II and just, just a good friend all the way around, besides a veteran. So Dr. Marks, tell me what you remember about your high school days, taking you back to that time here at what was then Greensboro Senior High School. Can I tell you about the first high school over on Spring Street? Sure. When I was five years old, my cousin took me. And in those days, each pupil had a desk and an inkwell, and I stuck my finger in that inkwell. I still remember it, and uh, I had to be taken to the uh, bathroom to get my fingers washed and all. But I, and then they moved over here, and I was in the second or third class here. Uh, and I walked to school from uh, the other side of Market Street mm -hmm. near, it was Arden Place. Mm -hmm. And so I've had good contact with this school from almost the beginning. As a matter of fact, I, the last uh, reunion that we had was 2005 and I happened to be co-chairman. Wow of that. Wow. Do you remember when the war broke out? What were you doing? What do you remember hearing on the news about it? Interestingly, uh, on V, uh, well, the day December 7, 1941, mm -hmm. I was in a car and hitchhiking from Greensboro to Durham to Duke. And when we got to Duke, we didn't have a radio on. The fellows were running around like crazy. And that's when I found out that there was Pearl Harbor. Uh, we went in at that time, almost immediately enlisted. That was on Sunday. By the following Sunday, most of us had, had enlisted in one branch or another. Mm -hmm. uh, I had gone to uh, Bragg to uh, enlist, and uh, we were not put on active duty, of course, but we were on inactive duty. And uh, they at that that year is the year that Duke had to, was going to go to the Rose Bowl, mm -hmm. and we moved it to, to Durham and played Oregon State. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And when we, then I w had already been uh, accepted in medical school, 
and I was in medical school when we were there for a year and then the Army and Navy took over mm -hmm. and we were all enlisted in the Army okay. or Navy. I went into the Army at that time. It was medical school and when I graduated uh, I was made a first lieutenant and later uh, I went overseas to liberate Korea and uh, they put me in charge uh, of the west coast of South Korea for public health and welfare. That's amazing. Tell me about your friend who's on the wall there. Sigmund and I were friends from childhood. We went to, on Saturday mornings, we went to the Carolina Theater because it was opened at that time. And uh, he and I walked in, we had a dime a piece, and I was small, he was big, and he straightened up, I slunk down, and I got in free. <laughs> and so we had 10 cents to spend on ice cream. <laughs> yeah, you used to walk to school with him, and you enlisted at the same time? Yes. Well, he was a year behind me a year and a day behind me. Mm -hmm. And th that is not his full name. Very, even his sisters didn't know his name. It was Herman Sigmund Seelig Pearl. What was it like when he went overseas? Well, he and I went swimming in, in the swimming pool out at the uh, park together and he went from there he went overseas and I was in medical school at that time mm -hmm. and that was and I received a letter from him in March of 1945 which told me what he was doing and he said do not tell my parents because he his job was to go out in the battle and bring in the dead. And apparently he was already dead when I got the letter. But you didn't know that when you read it? Did not know it, no. He told you to stay in school, didn't he? He sure did. He said, you stay there because I'm gonna need you. I still cry. 98. That's okay. Let it go. Sounds like he was a very special friend. And he we was were. brave and made the ultimate sacrifice. And then uh, Sammy Friedman and I were good friends too. And uh, he, he died as an instructor in the Air Force. Good friend. There was a third person you knew. Ross. Ross, tell me about Ross. Ross lived down the corner from me. Mm -hmm. And an interesting thing happened with he and I. He had a bicycle, I didn't. We went to the same elementary school together and at lunchtime one day, I borrowed his uh, bicycle took it home and then was, well, I was late getting back. So he got out and uh, he did, couldn't find his bicycle. And uh, I brought it back and I was sitting in class and the principal came in and pulled on my ear and said, take it back. And I took his bicycle back to his house <laughs> in a hurry. <laughs> so I had some and then we moved away from there yeah. at that time. When you see those 99 names on the Roll of Honor, what goes through your mind? They were honorable. It was saddened to me. Uh, there were a few times 
over in Korea that I escaped death. And I was graced, apparently the Lord wanted me to be, and now I'm gonna be 98 next month. So that's about it. And I do cry. But you're living your life just as your friend wanted. Yes. He said he wanted me to be a doctor. And I was retired now. What do you think Sigmund would think about the book that Harry has written? Trying he, to he would love it and respect it. Yeah. It was a great book. I reread it just a couple of days ago. And wonderful book. Yeah. Very personal. Thank you. Very personal. Just this idea that someone cares, right? And yes. doesn't want these stories to it's go amazing. to the It's amazing. It's amazing. And uh, I have, I've been blessed with a good memory. Yeah. Thank goodness. And uh, I'm still able to do things at my age. Not much, but I can do some. <laughs> and I respect that book. Yeah. When students of today at Grimsley see this room, and read the stories, what do you hope they get out of the experience? I hope they get the respect because we had good football teams uh, at this school. Uh, the, a lot of the fellows were friends of mine, of course. Uh, I can't remember names anymore, uh, but I respect them. And when I hear the name, then I remember them as as uh, football players. Yeah, it's amazing. Harry, what is your hope for Grimsley students who see this room? Well, I hope that gives them a glimpse of, of, their, of American history. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, we're moving away from, it's just not politically correct to talk about war anymore. Okay. And you know, if it hadn't been for World War II, we could have been teaching in Japanese or German or, or instead of English. So uh, I, I want my children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren to know about World War II history and those who gave, they made a supreme sacrifice. They gave everything they had. Some of them were 18 years old when they died. And uh, it's just, uh, that was... Uh, uh, significant part of our, our history as far as I'm concerned and that's what I would like for students to, to keep in mind. I don't have to dwell on it a lot right. but uh, keep it in mind that freedom comes with a high cost. Yeah. And that sense of patriotism, I mean Dr. Marks you signed up to enlist, that was what everyone wanted to do, you wanted yeah. to fight. And with, with just a week, in the first week. Uh -huh. Of course, I went to the Rose Bowl game. <laughs> <laughs> <Of course. laughs>